This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 1091 of Horse Tip Daily, your almost everyday morsel of helpful hints, useful facts, and practical techniques for horse folks. Brought to you today by EquestrianCollections.com. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip comes from the Dressage Radio Show. Show co-hosts Reese Kofler-Stanfield and Philip Parks answer a listener question about the student-trainer relationship. And we'll get right to our tip after this from Equestrian Collections. Coach Jen here, and I'm here with Debbie from EquestrianCollections.com, and she's got the EquestrianCollections.com product of the week. Take it away, Debbie. Oh, well, hi, Jen. One thing I wanted to, this week I wanted to do a shout out to one of our best listeners, somebody who listens to us every week, and that's Sandy Anastasio down in North Carolina. So just wanted to say hi, Sandy. We hi, appreciate Sandy. you. And- <laughs> <laughs> this week I wanted to talk about the Whores Bristol Fly Blanket. The reason I'm featuring this is not only because it's at the very beginning of fly season, but this one is a little bit different. The top of it is actually waterproof. So when you're in places that if it's going to be a rainy day, but, you know, sometimes after the rain, ugh, the bugs are horrible, this, it's, it, this sheet, it's a, it's a fly blanket. They call it a fly blanket because, because of the waterproofing, it's a little bit, it's not at quite as cool as some of the uh, fly sheets. But it's got uh, the waterproofing on the top. The sides are the mesh, just like, you know, most fly sheets so that it's cool. But it's still got that waterproofing on the top. And it's got a full neck that comes with this that goes all the way up, you know, to behind the ears. It's not detachable. It's one piece. So if you have, if you live in an environment where there's quite a bit of rain and you want to protect your horse from uh, particularly the bugs after a rain um, and you want him to be covered all the way up to the, his neck, this is the uh, sheet for you. So it's called the Whores Bristol Fly Blanket. It's less than $100 on our website, www.equestriancollections.com. There's a size chart there, so you can take a look at that. It comes in one color. It's white and dark blue. The, the um, waterproofing part is a dark blue. Um, so I think that's something that you should look for, especially if you live in kind of a rainy climate. It's also machine washable uh, in cool temperatures, so that's a good thing, too. This is a fantastic product, Debbie. I'm so glad that Hors is making this. There was another company many years ago that made this product, and they stopped making it, and I have one. It's a, <laughs> it's a waterproof sheet on top and a fly sheet on the bottom. And here in Florida and many other parts of the, the country where in the south, it is warm enough to have flies— but cool enough that if your horse gets rained on, he's going to get chilly. And it's fantastic because it pours down rain. It keeps the top of his back dry. But then when it mm-hmm. stops raining, it is, it's not so warm that they get overheated underneath. And it keeps the flies off because the minute it stops raining, the flies are back out. This is a fantastic product. Have one, use one. Recommended highly. <laughs> Well, Philip, this week for our Total Saddle Fit Tip of the Week, we have an email from a listener. And I think you've got it up. Yeah. Let me, let me, it's a little bit of a long one, but uh, we'll yeah. get to it. I think it's all very good information. Um, this is one of our listeners that's asking, she's wondering how to help her dressage instructor better understand how, how to help her learn. She's a longtime friend. The instructor is a longtime friend of the rider. Um, but they've only been doing regular lessons together for the past year or so. The issue is that her approach is often to treat mistakes or incorrect results as evidence of deliberate resistance on the part of the horse, the rider, or both. Her approach can often be less about encouragement and more about exasperation. She's not cruel. She's just surprised that we are still struggling and I should... And I should get a- get after, that's in quotations, get after my horse until she relents to her request. My issue is that the, both the mayor and I are overachievers who start to shut down if we are feeling scolded. So th- the more things escalate, the less can be heard and the stiffer they both get. An opinionated, off-the-track thoroughbred mare does not need a tense rider, especially if the goal is fluid engagement and throughness. Her mare and her have come a long way, 
And the best strategy, strategy has always been persuasion. Yes, I know it's hard, but I think we can figure this out and keep trying approach. More often than not, she's doing exactly what she's being told to do. I'm just not realizing my mistakes. But the more nervous that she gets, the less I can feel my own body, and it becomes a mess. She's having a hard time addressing, this isn't working for me right now. Please back off so I can think at the moment. I need a way to approach this with her in a gentle fashion outside of an actual lesson. I don't, she doesn't want to harm the friendship, and she doesn't want to insult her. I just need to find a way to approach this so that at the end of the lesson, things aren't just feeling frustrated and not moving forward. Do you have any advice for this, Reese? Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, I think that, and, and I'm sure you have similar, with your trainer, you know, it's a different kind of relationship. It's not just, you know, I'm, it's a doctor and I paid you for your services. Um, you know, we become friends with our students and or there are times that I actually teach people that are my friends outside of horses. Or my wife. Or, oh, Yes. Your wife, which God <laughs> bless Meredith. She's like an angel. I'm just saying, yeah, or your wife, or uh, I won't teach my husband. Actually, I told him he has to find another instructor. Um, but right. there are times where, you know, we are close to our friends. And just like anything, I think communication is number one. Um, communication and then really defining the relationship. And that is, okay, right now I'm your trainer. And right now I'm your friend. And they are different. You know what I mean? My, my best friend actually also rides with me. And so there are times that I'm doing my job and I think it's only human nature to want it to go well for your friend. You know, I don't think that this, this particular trainer is trying to do anything bad. I think that they're just maybe over trying because they really want their friend to do well. So communication, I think always talking, I think it's, I think it's important and, and I, Philip, I know you feel the same as it's important to speak with your trainer too. Um, there's nothing wrong. And I think we all grew up in a, in an atmosphere of you can't question your trainer. Well, I want people, I don't want little <laughs> soldiers running around. I want people to, to ask me what I'm doing. And I want to be able to have that communication with my trainers as well. But I will tell you, there's a time and a place to have that conversation. So I think that, that the, our listener alluded to that in their, in their discussion. And that was that she said, there's sometimes, you know, I need to talk to her, not in a lesson setting. And I think that that's important. And I think maybe you need to, um, pull your trainer aside and say for today's lesson, um, I need to, to have a discussion with you. So let's do an unmounted meeting, yep. have a cup of coffee, and, and do an unmounted meeting. And, and I don't 100% think that that's a bad thing to do every quarter with your trainer, especially, you know, if you work with them on a pretty frequent basis. You know, if I have a student that wants to talk to me and, and I only see him once a month or once every couple of months, uh, you know, I it gets... But if this is a really long-term relationship and that particular client wants to talk to you, I think I think you have to take the horse out of the picture and the two humans have to sit down with a cup of coffee, a glass of lemonade, whatever, or a glass of wine, depending, um, and sit down and have a conversation about what's going on and what needs to happen and what's not happening. Yeah, and I think I just I'm going to interject. Yeah, jump for in, a second. Please. I mean, yeah, if you're having, you know, if you if you ask your trainer to take the friend hat off, put on the trainer hat, pay them for that time. That's because right. Because that's a respectful thing to do. Um, and, you know, that's it's it's still you know, getting their advice as a trainer. And, and so if you're going to, you know, you're going to have an hour discussion, I think, you know, it's, it's respectful to pay for, pay for that. And also sets a little bit of boundaries, right. That they can't just, you know, kind of walk away the meeting or, or they have to treat it more serious. And I think it's that, a business that says meeting. On, yeah. I think that's yeah, it a business on, meeting in, in both ways by making a, tra a transaction that, that, that keeps it on, on those terms, you know, and I think coming from this, I mean, I've I've taught lots of lessons, and I know what it is to be frustrated as a coach. And and you know, when I was talking about teaching Meredith, there has been lessons between her and I that had ended in tears, and I feel terrible about it, right? Because I mean, it was just issues we were trying to work through, and it's hard to make that separation between coach and person. And and sometimes, you know, a you know, get after the horse or get after yourself moment feels very personal when it's coming from your friend. 
And so it, it becomes, you know, it's very, very difficult. And I, I can't say that I found a solution that works every time for that. But but in that moment, you know, Mer- Meredith will say, can, can, can you just back off for a second? Because it's fair for her to say that. And I can and I can go and I you know I stand in the corner or I leave the arena for a few, for a few minutes, and I come back and I say well you know and I can just you know I just leave because we, we you need to break away from the frustration, take a deep breath. I find that when I get to walk away from that situation, I start thinking through things and start thinking you know why is it not working at the moment, and, and then she gets that opportunity as well. I come back in, we talk about it for a bit, and maybe we don't do any more work after that, but we just talk. We say, you know, you're trying to do Traver. I, re- you know, I thought that the horse wasn't really giving the best effort. I thought, you know, maybe I thought you were, you know, I'm really, really honest about it. I say, I thought you weren't giving a great effort with it. You know, why is that? You know, I think the more that you can discuss these moments, the less they happen. Agreed. No, I think uh, so. And then, and so I just say, cut. We just need a yeah. break. <laughs> Stop. We yep. just need a break come back or don't come back or, or come back the, sure. the next time, you know, like whatever. But yeah, I feel like just to keep yeah. teaching through that moment is not helping Mm-mm. either person or the horse or whatever. And so. Well, and I, I think it's know, the nature. Yeah, yeah. I it think it's happens. the nature it of, of the beast. Yeah. yeah. And, and we typically spend um, a lot of time with our students. And so, uh, it become, you become close with, you learn about their family and what's happening and what's happening for Easter, for example, or, or whatever. And, and I think it's just the nature of the beast. And so there are times where you have to then kind of communicate and say, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings or I'm not trying, but this is what I'm seeing. So I think from a, a student perspective, you know, you have two trainers here. So from, from a student perspective, and I've had this with my own trainers, and that is, hey, we need to go to dinner and we need to have this discussion. We need yeah, to talk, talk about... Talk it through. Talk it through. Yep. And then everybody knows where everybody stands yep. and, and you can move forward, hopefully, from that. Yeah. And the other thing is... And it is, can be uncomfortable. Sorry. It can be uncomfortable in the moment, but, yeah, you know... Like every, any relationship. You got yeah, to... It, 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 it is a relationship. And then you add in the horse. So... I don't know, sometimes there's a lot of things there, you know, that you have going on. A lot on, of issues, so. a lot of factors, and and uh, yeah, I think the more that you can just calmly, you know, to move, you know, because I think in the end, I have this perspective that it's about for 99 percent of people, it's about having fun, enjoying time with the horse, and the more you get that across, you know, not going to the Olympics the next week, so just take it easy. Yeah, you know what I mean, deep breath. You know, yep. deep breath back off. I mean, does it really matter if you get a perfect shoulder in within the next three weeks? Not really. What's more important is that you come away from lessons feeling positive. There's positive interaction with your horse and, and this kind of thing. So more conversation, I think, needs to be happening yeah. in this in this relationship. Agreed. I think that's what it gets down to. So yeah, I hope that I helps. Think, yeah, I hope that helps too. And, and I was just going to add in, I thought, her perspective on, on training a mare. Which this is a whole nother tip, actually. Oh we could God. we could yeah. grab another tip into this, but I think her perspective, she does bring that she has a very hot, sensitive mare and, yeah, and she talked mare. about that. Yeah. <laughs> and I think <laughs> she she has a good handle on how to train her horse. And and that's what I struck me about this email. So continue with that. Continue with the fact that you know how to train your horse and what works for you and your horse and as a partnership and and that will become an important part of the conversation. So a lot about takes care of it. You can find more from Reese and Philip at dressageradio.com. You can also get lots more tips at horsetipdaily.com. And if you want to have every single one of your favorite Horse Radio Network shows as listed above with you wherever you go, go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network and download the free app for iPhone or Android. Do it today. It's quick, it's free, and it's easy. This podcast was made possible through the generous support of equestriancollections.com and listeners like you. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.